Okay, y'all, so today we are going to do this look, obviously. This is just, you know, my everyday casual look. So I actually was just going to do a black smoky eye and I was going to try to do one of those glossy black smoky eyes. I'm sorry if you can hear that. There's people working on the fence right now. I was actually going to do like a glossy black smoky eye today, but I feel like I very recently did a black smoky eye and yes, the video quality is bad. It's bad, but a black smoky eye is a black smoky eye. So I wanted to try something that's very much out of my comfort zone still. I am not good at cut creases and I'm not good at halo eyes. So I thought today, let's combine it. A halo cut crease fucking black smoky eye. Just throw it all into one. What could possibly go wrong? You know what I mean? It's really hard for me to get cut creases and halo eyes to look even on both of my eyes. It is so difficult. I think my eyes are just, they're like really different sizes. I don't know. It just is hard. Okay. I did my best. I think it actually came out good for my first attempt at a halo eye cut crease. And I do try to give you some tips, although I'm not the best at executing. I do give you some tips along the way. But um, yeah, so this is a really basic skin look. And I just did like a dark nude warm tone lip that I always do. So I just did the eye makeup for this video. I mean, it took long enough just with the eye makeup because I had to spend a lot of time very slowly blending this out because I'm just not that good at this kind of look yet. So it did take me a long time. This is just the eye look, but everything that I use on or off camera will be listed in the description bar below like always. And before we get into this video, if you like it, definitely give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because it makes me so happy and helps me out so, so much. So without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, y'all. So we are first going to start with a pretty light brown transition color. Throughout this entire look, I'm using the Morphe 350 palette, but I didn't really show it because you can do this technique with any colors that you have, any palette that you have. You can definitely accomplish this look with the Too Faced Peachy Mattes palette, the e.l.f. Mad for Matte 2 palette. That's a great palette from the drugstore. Any palette, any colors that you have, you can do this technique and it will just look so beautiful. I'm just doing warm tones today. I'm going in with two transition colors, one that was like lighter and then I decided I wanted to deepen it up a little bit more before I go in with any more intense colors. These are just kind of some warm orangey browns that I'm going in with and I'm really making sure that I blow this out. At first I did think that I was going to do a black smoky eye, so I worked like really hard on this transition. You kind of have to work hard on that transition regardless if you're doing any type of cut crease or halo eye and it seems like you're doing a lot of work for nothing, but I promise you that it all works out in the end and it makes the overall look so much better if you work really hard hard on that transition. Now I'm taking mine all the way from inner corner to outer corner like I do with pretty much every look and I'm even taking it onto the bridge of my nose. Of course you don't have to do that. That's very dramatic. You can definitely dial this back quite a bit if you would like to but I like stuff to be a very very blown out I'm sure. If you've watched any of my videos you know that already. I am keeping this a little bit more cat eye shaped than I normally would but I feel like with dark when you're working with dark black a black smoky or anything like that, giving it that cat eye shape will be one of the things that helps it not look so much like a black eye and make it look like a really beautiful makeup look. Of course, I, I like to sometimes keep the bottom and top going at the same rate just so I can see how the look is going to come around all together and I blend that out very, very far. Again, with a black smoky eye or a really intense look, I like to blend out this transition very, very far. Yes, that is what I like. I like it to look that dramatic, but also when the transition is blended out very far and then the black is just on your lid and blended a little bit into the crease, again, it's gonna make it look like a very purposeful, beautiful makeup look and not so much like you just got punched in both of your eyes. So now I'm going in with actually a very red like cranberry color from the Morphe 350 palette because I wanted this look to be a little bit more on the red side, not so much on the orange side. That's why I'm using this color. But again, you can use any colors that you want and I really love this brush. I don't know exactly which one it is, but it's this beautiful like very tapered blending brush from Morphe and I absolutely love it. 
It's beautiful for looks like this. It makes getting into the crease and blending from there the easiest thing ever. You need this brush in your life. And again, blending from inner corner all the way out to outer corner and kind of keeping that cat eye shape on the outer corner there. I also blend it really far up, not so much into the arch of my brow, but right there in the front. I think it just gives your eye a little bit more of a dynamic look, and because my cut crease has to go so high, it makes sure that you can see the transition after I cut the crease. And then I'm just going in with those same colors and that same pretty big pencil brush and catching my lower lash line up all the way from inner corner to outer corner and making sure that it connects to the top of the eye look like I always do. Okay, and then I lined my inner rim and my waterline with a black eyeliner, just the Wet n Wild black eyeliner. Any black eyeliner will do. And then I am smudging this out with the black eyeshadow from the Morphe 350 palette with this little definer brush. And I'm blending it out kind of far, but not too far because, again, I want the, you to be able to see those warm transition colors farther down than you can see the black. The black, to me, is there for, like, the accent of it and, like, the deepness. You don't want it to just be black. You want to be able to see those beautiful transition colors so that it looks like a nice, purposeful, beautiful, warm, black, smoky eye situation. And just blending that out with the same pencil brush with no extra product on it. Just kind of working that color around. Then actually right here I'm going in with like a white color. This is from the Zoeva Brow Spectrum Palette because it's just what I had on hand. I tend to forget to highlight and I can you can even already see that it highlighting your brow bone in that inner corner with a really dark look like this really brings it together and again makes it look very purposeful. It's just, it seems so small and insignificant but it really makes it look more complete even though we're not even close to being done with this look yet. So now I'm kind of just doing this to mark where I want the black to be. You don't have to do this first, but I'm putting black with a very small pencil brush on the very outer corner and the inner corner. Again, you can put this black. I thought that I was going to do a black smoky eye, so I was going to put this all over my lid and blend that black into the crease, but decided to do a halo cut crease eye look today. So I'm just putting this down so I can mark like where I want the deepest black color to be so I don't accidentally take the concealer way too far. I go back and forth quite a bit because I, you know, I'm not that good at this. So usually whatever color you want to be above the cut crease, you would take in the entire crease, which I don't do, but I'll show you how I kind of fix that later or go and clean that color up. So then I'm going with the concealer, and then I just look up, and wherever the concealer transfers, that is where I'm going to cut my crease because that's where my eyelid's going to touch. So if I cut the crease lower than that and then I blink throughout the day, the cut crease is going to go away because the eyeshadow is going to transfer above that and just ruin the whole look and make it look not as clean. So by doing it that way, it's really going to fit your eye shape and your eye size perfectly. Again, it looks kind of silly because you are covering up a lot of the work that you did on the transition, but I promise you that it's all worth it. I'm getting so frustrated there, but I promise you that it's all worth it and that you're better off making a beautiful transition so that on the sides of the cut crease and above the cut crease it looks beautiful and seamless than to like try to cut it and blend around it it's so much easier I will say with the cut crease I didn't do such a great job of it but you're going to want for a halo eye cut crease you want it to be kind of like a, a V shape you want the top where the cut is to be the widest and you want it to be the thinnest at the bottom at your lash line it's just a lot more flattering on the eye again I didn't do the best job of it but 
for reference for you, it is a little bit more flattering if you do a V shape and it makes the cut crease stand out a lot more at the top. And while the concealer is still really tacky, I don't set it with anything. I just go straight in with the gold color from the Morphe 350 palette. Again, use whatever color you like. You could do a really pretty pop of blue if you wanted to. It'd be amazing. So then here I am. I wanted to take that black a little bit higher. So I'm taking a little angled brush. It's like a brow brush that I got a million years ago from Sigma. And I'm really, this is also going to make the cut look really clean. So this is how I cheat on my cut creases. If I don't get the cut clean enough with concealer, I just take the, the darkest color that I want in the crease. If you don't want to take black this far, then just take your darkest transition color, like that cranberry color, and cut with like a thin brush, like an eyeliner brush. Cut a really thin line right there and then blend out just on top and leave that sharp line on the bottom, if that makes sense. That's how I kind of cheat the system. If you wanted the black to be in the crease, like right here, like it is for me right here, it's better to work on that before you cut your crease. It makes it look much more seamless and makes it so much easier to blend out because I spend so much time blending this out with tiny little brushes and with a little bit of my transition color like I am here. I have a little bit of that cranberry color on my brush to help diffuse that. It just takes so much longer. So just keep that in mind that the darkest color that you want you want that to be the last thing you put in your transition shades before you cut your crease, if that makes sense. This is a way that you can fix that if you decide you want a darker color on the top, but if you already know what you want and you're not just experimenting, kind of like I was here, the last shade that you put in your in your cut crease, or the last shade that you put in your crease is going to be the darkest shade above your cut crease. But there's the, the tiniest bit of that cranberry color on that pointed tapered brush and I'm just blending, blending, blending. On the outer corner I do kind of turn my head and try to make it a little bit more wing shape and like wing that out right there a little bit. And it's a lot of back and forth packing on the black, blending it out. Here I'm getting like so tired of blending. I was like, oh my lord, what am I doing? Lots of back and forth. So be very patient with yourself, especially if you're like me in this video and this is the first time that you're trying something like this. Just be patient with yourself. It's always going to be okay and it's just makeup. It will wash off if you hate it. And then this is me realizing that they're uneven, but I'm over it because it's my first try and that's good enough. Then I'm going to throw on some mascara and this is one eye without a lash and then one eye with a lash. Honestly, it looks almost the exact same without a lash. So if you don't wear lashes, this is honestly a really good look for you. Okay, y'all, that is the finished look. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them down below in the comments section. Check the description bar for all of the products that I used on or off camera, as well as my Facebook link and my Instagram. I think that's everything. That's all I have, right? Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Other than that, I think we're good to go. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just have a good one. Bye!